Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French here. A huge night in politics. The first presidential debate less than three hours away. Uh, for both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump here, the stakes could not be higher. Also, huge night for Hofstra on Long Island. This is the third time the university has hosted a presidential debate in the last three presidential cycles. Now, this one falls just 42 days before Election Day. And it also comes as the polls are unmistakably tightening. Trump and Clinton, basically a virtual tie nationally, with neither candidate getting even close to 50 percent support. And things are also tightening up in those crucial swing states. Now, I want you to take a look at these numbers. Pennsylvania, Colorado, Florida, all within five points. And Hillary, she's got an eight-point lead in Virginia. Now, when you look at some of the issues that are the most important to voters when polled, it's kind of a mixed bag. People trust Clinton more to handle national security and immigration, but they trust Trump more on the issue of the economy and job creation. Now, I want to head out to Hofstra University where our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman, has been live all day and will be live all throughout the night. Andrew, uh, give us a preview of what to expect here. Well, Rich, you know, first debates are not always decisive affairs, and they don't always determine who wins the eventual presidential election. But based on the numbers that you just gave us, this could be a perfect storm, at least in this presidential cycle. About six weeks left until Election Day, a razor-thin margin in the polls, and the possibility of a record audience watching at home, maybe as many as 100 million people, perhaps the best chance both of these campaigns will have to get their message across to voters, which is why the campaign spent much of this day massaging that messaging and also also doing their best to manage expectations ahead of the 9 p.m. debate. Tonight, facing off for the first time, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump taking on the issues and each other in their first presidential debate. They have to actually have to switch position sites. He needs to be less visceral and more rational, and more head and less heart, just like she needs more heart and less head in, in the course of this debate. The 90-minute showdown broken down into 15-minute segments, with Clinton going first, each getting two minutes to reply. And with the latest polling showing a close race, tonight could be a turning point, even with only about 3% of voters still undecided. The debate absolutely can have an impact on the outcome of the election. Uh, with such a small undecided vote, but it's also a, hardly any difference between the candidates in the polling. So that a 1% or 2% uh, change could make all the difference. Both candidates taking different strategies in preparing. Clinton holding mock debates, studying video of Trump in his past 11 debates, and meeting with Trump's ghostwriter for personal insight. Trump downplaying the amount of work he's putting into getting ready, saying he wants to make sure he's himself. So just what are the stakes for tonight's debate? Well, that's hard to say. In some presidential cycles, the first debate has been what separated the candidates and led to an eventual winner and an eventual loser. But that's not always the case. Think back four years ago to the 2012 debates when Barack Obama stumbled in his first deba debate against Mitt Romney, yet went on to victory in the general election. Or go back to 1984 when Ronald Reagan also stumbled in his first debate against Walter Mondale, but Reagan rallied in the second debate. Neither of these candidates tonight is an incumbent, so we'll see how that plays on that history going forward, but it really is anybody's ball game with all eyeballs right here on Hofstra. That's the latest from here at the site of the first presidential debate, Rich. Let's send it back to you in the studio. Andrew, thank you very much. When Andrew talks about eyeballs, um, it's expected 100 million Americans could be tuning into this thing. Remember when Trump was worried that, hey, it's on a Monday night, it's going to compete with Monday night football? You don't hear this anymore. This is must-see TV. Um, 70 million, historically a big number for debates, even when they're not up against football. Tonight, I don't know what happens, but I know it's going to blow that number out of the water. Let's bring in our panel here. Former Democratic New Jersey Congressman Steve Rothman joins us. Dominic Carter next to him, political journalist and author. And Republican State Assemblyman Kieran Lawler, who represents portions of the great Dutchess County. Guys, thank you all very much. All right, we'll get into what we think in terms of the style, in terms of what they should do, shouldn't do, and everything else. But let's just talk state or race. Um, and you can kind of separate uh, the veneer of the BS that's out there whenever everybody says, oh, we always expect it would be tightening. Hillary Clinton didn't think she'd be sitting here on September 26th and this thing be, be within the margin of error. The Clinton camp's got to be surprised how tight this thing is right now. 
They may have been surprised, but a lot of people in the Democratic Party are not that surprised. Hillary Clinton, given all of her experience and knowledge uh, and ability, uh, nonetheless has a problem sometimes connecting uh, with people. Uh, here's the good news for her. I believe Donald Trump supporters are locked in. He could do or say nothing tonight, which would keep them from voting for him. Hillary Clinton has a similar group, but there's a whole bunch of undecideds who will never vote for Trump, but don't know if they could ever cast a vote for Hillary. Tonight is Hillary Clinton's opportunity to win these undecided by being presidential, by being trustworthy, by being likable, or by Donald Trump tonight exploding in an unusually uh, horrible way mm. that gets these undecideds finally to move for Clinton. You know, Dom, I've heard um, over the weekend um, from some folks that have been working with the Clinton campaign, there's two concerns for him. One is, and you've talked about it, it's not so much that Trump's going to bring that more, many more people on to the train, but the lack of passion or the lack of drive to get people out to the polls. Um, whatever it was, four years ago and eight years ago, there was the history making eight years ago with uh, Barack Obama that drove them. The African American vote was still going to turn out for him. But there seems to be, well, I'm not voting for Trump, and I'm not exactly sure I'm going to get out to the polls. I'll watch tonight because that's must-see TV. But how motivated they are, that's the one thing. Then the other thing they're worried about is, is Johnson's 8 or 9 percent real? Is Stein's 3 percent real? Historically, if you're not standing on the stage of the debate, people forget about you come Election Day. But who knows what rules apply in 2016? It's been insane. What do you think are they most worried about? People voting for somebody who's not even at a hostra tonight or getting people that say they're with them to actually vote and cast their ballot? A little bit of both, but the reality is more in terms of the latter of what you just said. One of the words that you just uh, stated, Richard, that I agree with a thousand percent, you mentioned the word motivation, motivation. The assessment by the congressman, I agree that uh, perhaps Trump is at a ceiling. Perhaps there's a lot of room for Hillary Clinton to grow, which means that this night is enormously important. But Richard, here's how I always knew that this race was going to, uh, to tighten. Notice who's not a factor in all of this. As a matter of fact, he's become a liability. Trump was smart enough. You have to give him credit. He completely neutralized Bill Clinton with all of the stuff that's out there. Mm -hmm. And God only knows what Trump may say tonight when that issue comes up. When they neutralize Clinton, th this ties in with your point. When they completely, they, they made Clinton her number one uh, uh, asset into, abs uh, he's just there. Who motivates the black base more than Bill Clinton, well, except the, for Obama? Well, that's the, what, that's the wild card, is how much Barack and Michelle Obama are actually going to spend political capital between now and the election. They may not do it out of love for Hillary, but if they want to keep their agenda, Supreme Court and everything else, they got enough motivations. On the flip side, Karen, I've had Republican after Republican, whether they be former governors in that seat, Congress people, et cetera, saying, you know what, I just can't do it. I can't even hold my nose and vote for Trump here. Um, the guy's burned too many bridges in the party. I mean, look at, you know, John Kasich. <laughs> the, the convention's in his home state, right. he doesn't even go, and the amount of people that follow through. What does he have to say to get some of those Republicans who said, this guy's not even a Republican, he doesn't care about anything, look at how many people he's humiliated and hurt our chances um, to be associated with his brand, but yet they looked at he's pretty much neck and neck in this thing, you know, 40-something days left. Does he speak to them tonight, you think, or no? I, I think he does. I think he has been all along. You know, uh, Does he risk, though, changing the thing that got him to where he is, though, by being a non-political brand? I think he needs to make this point. Ironically, Donald Trump is the hope and change candidate at this stage. Uh, Two-thirds or three-quarters of the country thinks we're going in the wrong direction, and while Obama is personally popular, most people are not happy with how we are doing on the world stage, how we're doing economically. And Hillary Clinton uh, is going to carry out uh, Barack Obama's policies, uh, whether she wants to or not. Now she needs him more than ever. Her inability to campaign has forced him out on the trail, and she's going to have to defend his legacy. And I would say his legacy, the Iran deal, uh, Obamacare, and all the problems with that, that is one of the reasons that people think we're going in the wrong direction. So if we have any hope of changing that, we have one choice right now. I was uh, Carly Fiorina's chair here in New York. I voted for Ted Cruz on, on primary day here in New York. Uh, but right now, as between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, the one who's going to appoint a 
justice to the Supreme Court. He already has one in his pocket, whoever the next president is. Uh, that's going to be at all to the liking of Republicans is Donald Trump. So uh, unless you want to double down on, a, on the things that have gone wrong in the last eight years, and you're a Republican or an independent, well, Trump is I'm, your guy. I'm going to be really curious because given your um, your background and your support for Carly Fiorina, and we've had um, – you know, Nan Hayworth here as well, the congressman was also with Fiorina. What he said about Fiorina in the face, what he said about, uh, you know, name it, you know, uh, Megyn Kelly, as well as several of the women. Some people say, oh, that's him being him, and he's got, and he gets away with it. But there's a lot of constituencies that he's got to try and shore up tonight. So that that's going to be fascinating where he goes for this. And unlike any other race, um, it's going to be decided by social media early on. Like, who's won before the debate's even over, arguably? It's going to be defined by sound bites. It's 90 minutes long. You know, that's a long time when there's only two people out there, right? And how long does he go before he throws the temper tantrum? There are so many different things at play here. Um, I want to jump to a break. And, and when we come back, I want to get into, you know, what are the expectations? Where should the candidates go? Where should they avoid going at all here? Um, who do you think is going to be on defense? Who's going to be on the attack? There are rumors that Trump might go out of his way to be extremely gracious to Hillary Clinton here. What the heck does she do then? You know, we got all those questions and much more here. Huge night in politics and political history. Uh, we're just getting started. Stay with us. RFL back right after this quick break. I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. 